Three episodes in and Life is Strange is maturing pretty beautifully. With each episode, the game is moving away from that cheesy, unnatural teenage trash dialogue we had in the first one and progressing into a pretty heavy adventure with a steadily building sense of dread. I'm Alana, this is Button Bash, and today I'll be reviewing Life is Strange, episode three. Episode 3 follows right off the back of Kate Marsh's suicide, a pretty tragic event that I was worried the game just wouldn't take seriously enough. Previous episodes of Life is Strange have had a habit of undermining more serious themes in favour of having you do some dumb, time wasty crap like shoot at glass bottles in a junkyard because Chloe thinks it's hella cool or something. Kate's death is the most dramatic thing to happen in the game just yet, and it's actually dealt with accordingly. It's like the whole environment of the school has subtly altered to pay homage to her death. Max probably could care more, but her lack of enthusiasm is somewhat excused by her weird infatuation with Chloe's recklessness. And all of the dumb time filler stuff that has to exist in these games' various episodes to add some length is much more engaging, or possibly just harder in episode three. At one point, you use your rewind skills to sneak out of a building you probably shouldn't have snuck into in the first place. And while it's not overly difficult, it's a nice and tense experience. A big step up from find some empty beer bottles, Max, which I will probably never forgive the game for. Seriously, that sucked. There's also one of the trickiest puzzles we've seen so far. Talk to three separate people and use the information they've given you to get more information from the other three. It's not exactly obvious how you're going to get the keys you're after, and there's plenty of rewinding needed here to sort of make it a trial and error kind of thing, but it's also a lot smarter than a lot of the walking around that takes place. Episode 3 actually has a very good mix of walking around the pretty slowly involving environments and actually doing things. And while there are some major animation issues, don't even get me started on Max and Chloe swimming because that was just a hilarious animation failure and the lip synchronization is way off. The game is still consistently stunning and somewhat relaxing just in appearance. There's the school grounds with various relevant posters plastered in the hallways, Chloe's multifaceted but mostly edgy punk chick room that still doesn't actually limit itself to just one stereotype, and then there's Max's neat but quirky little room. It's a pleasure to keep exploring these environments and learn more about those inhabiting them as we do. And just when it all seems pleasant, episode three throws some really, really messed up plot developments at you. I can't and won't say more, but let it be said that this one is absolutely worth playing just for the pretty grand, very involved tale it has to tell. You are one full on place, Arcadia Bay. I'm Alana, thanks for watching Button Bash and stay tuned for our review of episode four, which is coming very soon.